It is my distinguished honor and a privilege to introduce Ambassador of Tech, the U.S. Trade Representative and the only Chinese American in President Biden's cabinet. Ambassador Tai represents the Chinese Americans at the highest level, the highest office of the land, and makes all of us proud. She understands the historic significance of repealing the Chinese Exclusion Act and cares deeply about the future of the Chinese American community. So let's welcome Ambassador Tai to give her remark at this historical conference. Those immortal words and ideas like 
electric cord through our hearts, through our patriotism, and through our individual. We are forever tied to those ideals because we walk in the shoes of so many that have come before us, those that bled and shed tears to push us forward, closer toward fulfilling the promise of America for all of our people. That is what so many of our heroes and heroines fought for. That is what Adam A. Wong fought for. That is what Kim Wo fought for. And Wong Kim Ark. And Marsh Fong Yu. And so many more. Their fight for a more just and inclusive America opened new doors for more people to come here from Asia. And I would not be here in my job serving the American people without them. I was born in Connecticut in 1970, the very first American life. Because of President Kennedy's immigration reforms in the 1960s, my parents were able to come to the United States to pursue graduate studies in the sciences, become Americans, and devote their careers to public schools. So I am both second generation American and a second generation college. In fact, I remember earlier in my career as a lawyer at the agency I now had, the U.S. Trademark Senator's office, one of the first cases I argued at the World Trade Organization. I was there with my USTR co-counsel, whose parents had come to the United States from India. As we stated that we were presenting the case on behalf of the United States of America, we beamed with pride knowing that here we were, two daughters of immigrants from Asia, fighting for we the people. That is the America I know and love. That no matter what you look like, you are welcomed as a treasured character fighter in our American story. This story lives on today. It is being written by everyday Americans, not willing to accept the status quo as a form of inclusion, not willing to grow cynical in the face of oppression and ignorance, but willing to stand up to the beating and cursing, living out their lives, providing for their loved ones, serving their communities, and loving their neighbors. And it's not just Chinese Americans Asian Americans, but all Americans who have a stake in our nation's story. That this experiment that we call America is worth perfecting. This home is worth building, and this bond worth defending. Men and women, like all of you here today, are not willing to settle for what was or could have been, but to pick up that pen and write a new chapter in our story. I want to recognize the important group of Chinese American and Asian American organizations that are here this morning. I also want to thank Congressman Roger Krishnamurthy for sponsoring this event here in the Capitol. Um, and of course, Congresswoman Judy Chu, our fearless leader of the APAC and Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. Thank you for all that you are doing. Our administration is so proud to be your partner this morning. Since day one, President Biden and our entire team has been fighting for you and his name. One of the first actions President Biden took after taking office was to sign an executive order on advancing racial equity and support for underserved communities through the federal government. And this past January, our administration issued the first national strategy to advance equity, justice, and opportunity for the Asian American President Biden also revamped the White House initiative at the President's Advisory Commission on Asian Americans and Native Americans. It is truly an honor for me to serve as a co-chair of both, and we have been working hard on your behalf to address systemic racism in our policies and our programs, to improve language access and to disaggregate data, to empower small business owners and Yes, we know that there is much more work to do. 
our communities are still experiencing the biggest of violence. Columbia University and the Committee of 100 recently conducted a survey of Chinese Americans and found that nearly 75% of respondents experienced racial discrimination or racism-related violence just in the last couple months. And more than half worry about their safety. According to the organization Stop AAPI Hate, between March 2020 and March 2022, there were over 11,000 incidents of anti Asian hate in America. Our communities continue to fear for our family members, our elders, and our children. We hear your concerns loud and clear. This is not real. Tensions between the United States and the people's and make things worse. Our bilateral relationship between countries is complex and profoundly concentrated, and there are real challenges. But we need to be disciplined in defining what the challenge is, disciplined in making clear what the challenge is not. We need to be crystal clear that our concerns are with the PRC government's policies and practices not with the Chinese people or those of Chinese descent. We can fiercely defend <coughs> our economic interests and our national security, and fiercely embrace our diversity at the same time. In fact, we must do both. This is... <laughs> this is, in fact, an enormous priority for me and my staff at U.S. <laughs> trade policies that are more just and inclusive. We are meeting AA and NHPI workers, small businesses, and their communities where they are to hear directly from them and to incorporate their concerns into our work, just as we are doing with workers, small business owners, family farmers, all across America. We are making sure our policies reflect the needs and desires all Americans across our economy, especially those that have been marginalized, not just the ones that can afford Washington policies. We will face, undoubtedly, old headwinds and new headwinds. But I am deeply moved because of all of you, because of all of us, because I know that we will respond with the same resolve, the same determination, so that in the midst of all of our trials, our joy will be unhindered, our unity unbroken, and our hope unhindered. So that as future generations look back 80 years from now, as they glance up at the torch in the hands of the Statue of Liberty, or an AI rendering of that torch, they too will feel the connection electric cord that President Lincoln was talking about, that inseparable line and saying, yes, this story, this country is worth fighting for, this home is worth building. Thank you so much.